Welcome to Batshit, a frank and funny look at living with mental illness. While we'll touch on several illnesses, Batshit is focused on those along the spectrum of bipolar disorders. I'm your host, Adam. And I'm your other host, Brad. And we're both bipolar. So strap in and let's see how Batshit we really are. Spoiler alert, pretty damn Batshit. This episode's topic, sleep. 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 Sleep is, uh, it's important for everyone. Yeah, I wonder if people use this podcast to fall asleep. Probably. Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do have those smooth, dulcet tones. Yeah, to our... well, especially when we have pillow talk with pillow, Brad. Pillow talk with Brad. <laughs> uh, no, I, you know, Brad brought up an interesting thing that he wanted to talk about, and I thought sleep is something that, uh, doesn't get touched on enough, but has so much to do with your mental health. Yeah, both if you have an illness and and for people who don't. Yeah, yeah, it's gigantic. It's actually one of the first questions my psychologist asked me. He's like, how's your sleep? And I go, well, I don't dream, and when I wake up, I'm still tired. And he goes, huh, let's look into that. And I go, well, yeah, because if that's supposed to be the time when your body and mind are supposed to recharge... And you're not dreaming, which means in though I mean technically you are dreaming, blah 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 blah, but you don't know how much you're dreaming. Uh, you're not hitting the uh, the REM cycles that you need to hit. Yeah. Right. And that's the uh, the time that you're supposed to be recharging your body. And maybe you are hitting the uh, REM cycles, but your body isn't uh, uh, getting rest. Then you're just wearing yourself down and down and down and down until you reach a breaking point. Because your brain needs that rest. But also, sleep triggers so many hormonal responses yep. in the body. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're underslept, your cortisol goes up. You know, other uh, hormones and chemicals in your body, dopamine, serotonin, these things lower. Mm -hmm. um, and they create a, a an environment in your body where it's difficult to maintain good mental health. Yeah, yeah. And th there are so many tricks, right, that people have for sleeping, like uh, blackout curtains, um, better mattress. I have uh, to have the room cold. Yep. And uh, uh, brown noise playing. Brown noise? Yeah, brown noise. So brown noise uh, occurs at a frequency um, that's similar, I think, to the alpha wave patterns in your brain. But basically, it it keeps your brain from registering other noises. Really? So it's not that it covers them up. It's just at the right frequency that your brain's like, ah, I'm not going to register that. Is it, it like? Is it kind of like a piercing sound? Like a no, hum? It's, it sounds. It's like a lower version of white noise. Interesting. I've yeah. never heard of brown noise. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, people have all these tricks and, you know, counting sheep, um, warm glass of milk. And I think that... Um, Sex. Sex. <laughs> Whatever it takes for you to get a good night's sleep, do it. But uh, it can be really tricky. And if you're not sleeping, uh, look into that. <laughs> Look into that, or the experiences yeah. you have sleeping, because that's a time for your subconscious to come out. Well, right? and that and that can be a uh, a sign that you have something mm. that you're unaware of. So, people who are depressed, for instance, usually have a hard time going to sleep at night, but a really difficult time waking up. Sure, you know we've talked before about like it's hard to get out of bed. But I don't know about you, but those times when I'm depressed, I can't get out of bed. I'd lay in bed until three o'clock oh, if I could. Yeah. But I, I'm, I also want to be up until like 3 a.m. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And, doing nothing, like playing oh, a video yeah, yeah, game yeah, yeah, or some yeah. shit, it's, binging it's, Netflix. But Yeah, you have that weird kind of, like, you recognize the fact that your body's tired, and even your mind is even a little foggy, but you don't have the desire to go to bed. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've definitely had that. I've definitely yeah. experienced that. And then on the flip side, uh, with mania, you can go several days without sleep at all, and you're fine, which should also be a red flag. Yeah. So basically, you. if you have any problem with sleep, uh, yeah. your brain may be broken. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, most Americans, I forget the exact statistic, but it's something like 85% of Americans are chronically underslept hmm. because of our our hustle work culture. Sure. First off, you know, we're like, oh, I got to get up at 6 a.m. and get this done and get that done, et cetera. But there's, uh, there's a thing we do at night. There's a germ. It's either a German or a Japanese term for it that that I need to look up because I love that there was an actual word for this, but it's um uh <clears throat> like revenge activity. Revenge so like, activity. Yeah. So Ooh. you you feel like you haven't gotten enough 
done for yourself in the day. Okay. You know, you get up, you take the kids to school, you work your job, and then you're like, oh, I got these errands to run. I got to take my kids to soccer, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the kids are in bed now. I want to watch TV, but it's 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. You know, I should probably be going to bed, but I'm going to stay up until one. Oh. So I get my time. Oh, that's not nearly as exciting yeah, no. as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like, dude, does a large percentage of the population go out and like, you know, kill their nemesis? And I like that. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. that. And then take a nap. And then take a nap. Because <laughs> now I can sleep. Now I can yeah, sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so, up my mind. Yeah, like you're you're getting revenge for your day by sacrificing your sleep at night. Oh, okay. Um, is kind of the idea behind it. But most I, most people do that, you know? That I'm means, prone to that. Sure. I, even that idea of... Um, like uh, uh, social media, right? Like how many of us go to bed after scrolling through social media for 30 minutes? Yeah. Right? In, and that puts you off times in a mental headspace, right? Which yeah. is going to not make falling asleep easy. You know, it's not to be- mention that studies have shown staring at a screen keep like activates portions of your brain to, to stay awake. Yeah. Uh, it, it's... You got to do everything you can to sleep. Like that's the end of that. There are sleep studies that have been done, you know. But at the same time, there's a lot of reward in our culture for not sleeping. Yeah, there's a lot of people like I stayed up all night, bro. College, I pulled yeah. in an all nighter, bro. I sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, I sleep when I'm dead. Military guys, yeah. I can only sleep for like two hours and I'm good. I'm like, what? Do you, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? If you go, if you go chronically underslept for too long. Uh, you will start to hallucinate. Yes. Like low-key hallucinations, but you will start to hallucinate. I did a sleep study uh-huh. right before I moved to Los Angeles because I needed money <laughs> um, because I'm an actor. I needed money. <laughs> so uh, it was a seven-day sleep study, okay? And what it was, you're, you're in a room, and there's no windows, and it's all fluorescent light, and you can't have a TV. And in this particular one, you couldn't get out of bed unless you had to use the bathroom. Oh, yeah, wow. Just lay in bed, right? And for one of the days, two of the days, they kept me up as long as I could stay up. And the goal was to hit a certain time. Now, there's no clocks in the room, so I don't know what time they were trying to hit. But I think it was like 48 hours. How did they keep you up? So they had someone sit with me, oh, okay. right? So anytime I would start to, to fade, they'd be like, hey, Adam, how you doing? You know, it's like trying to engage me that way. You can't yeah. sleep. Don't sleep. And by the end of that, I was seeing shit. Yeah, I was seeing really? shit underneath. Yeah, like because there was a uh, 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 the equivalent of like a, a bookcase or a desk or something like across from the bed. And I, I swear to God, I saw like a little monkey under there. And I was there was someone with me, you know, sitting with me. And I'm like, what's a fucking monkey, man? Do you see, do you see that? Because <laughs> I know it's not real, but I see a monkey. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, it was like a really cute like college student who was like oh you're insane and i'm like yep i am uh, <laughs> but yeah yeah sorry I, tangent but i've hallucinated that yeah. was it that was the whole reason yeah. for my tangent i've hallucinated from lack of sleep well so you think about that like you're you're that that's a symptom of certain mental illnesses right so when you go without sleep you're you're breaking your brain sure and so if you already suffer from a mental illness and you're grinding and you're only sleeping five hours a night six hours a night that's eventually going to catch up with you. What is that going to do? Yeah. You know, is that going to trigger a manic state? Is that going to trigger a depressive state? Is that going to trigger psychosis, delusions? Right. And well, you think about it, and we have both worked multiple jobs at a time. We've mm-hmm. both worked crazy hours for extended periods of time. Yeah. What kind of damage did that do to us? Yeah. I mean, and- did that contribute to our bipolar being as severe as it is maybe or the on when the onset occurred i don't know yeah. like i just know like in college i was going to school full time and i was uh cooking overnight and on the weekends i work at the shop working on cars and so like yeah. i didn't sleep a lot also i was trying to be social on occasion so it's yeah. like how and in our society we reward that oh yeah Man, Adam, adam's a hard worker he's a hard hard worker he's grinding he he put himself through school because he was like working all the time and also going to class and it's like he shaved 10 years off his lifespan yeah, but he did but it he got, he put through, him, he got yeah. that ba in communications <laughs> look look where that took him <laughs> i'm recording a podcast in my garage <laughs> sad uh <laughs> But that's that's so stupid that we that we reward 
lack of sleep, that we reward people putting their bodies in mind through unnecessary off times yeah. stress. Yeah. Right? It's I, I work in post production for my day gig, and the number of times I've had to stay up 16 or 18 hours because prep was not done the correct way and we had to fix it in post is one of the favorite things that people say out here. Um, and people are like, well, that's just what you got to do. That's how you got to do this job. And I'm like, no, it's not. That's not how you have to do this job. You have to, the other people have to plan better or shoot better or make it all uh, or have more realistic expectations for turnaround time. But instead, I've got my guys uh, in December, one of my colorists worked 72 hours straight with random naps in his bay. Oh my God. And I was like, what are you, for what? Because it was, I guarantee you, no one watched the show he worked on. I won't say it, but it's like, I guarantee you, no one watched this show. Yeah. And it's like, when he, afterwards, he's like, oh, it's just part of the job. I'm like, no, no, it's not. No, no, it's not. Like, that's not healthy. That's not the right way to be working. That's not the right way to be sleeping. That's not the right way to be living your life. Because I guarantee you, he made just as many mistakes, if not more, because he was tired, right? Then uh, uh, probably double the mistakes he would have ordinarily made, as opposed to giving him like an eight or 10 hour shift the way they're supposed to. Yeah. And again, People go to the, go to this guy, go to some of the members on this team because they work like maniacs like that. And there's a pride to it. There's a pride in it. And as long as we continue to reward that, like, what, what, what can you do? Yeah. What can you do? I, I, I don't see an answer there. Because mental health, and really physical health, but mental health more so, is not a priority in this country. No, not at all. No, yeah. and, and our solutions for these things are tangential. Like, for instance, someone was like, hey, Brad, are you getting enough greens? You know what I right. mean? Like, Take some you, melatonin. Yeah, so, uh, don't worry about sleeping, though. It's yeah. like, well, wait, what? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like hold on. And, and you know, it's that same idea where, um, you know, uh, look, uh, I know that you have a lot of uh, – problems from when you were a kid that you've never talked about and you've repressed down ignore all that let's just deal with your current <laughs> marriage and why that might be fucked up and i'm like yeah. well, don't you think there's a possibility that the way i was raised and the relationships i experienced when i was a kid affected my current marriage and they're like let's just deal with the current marriage i'm like great right. slap a band-aid on the problem don't fix it yeah yeah i yeah we, we um idolize people who repress their needs yeah whatever those needs are yeah. we repress them you know it's funny because we're such a hardcore you know capitalist country and you know uh we, we hate socialism we hate communism blah 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 but in many ways we have kind of a communist mindset in that a person's worth is only judged by what they do and how hard they work at it huh. you know yeah which is very much like soviet russia <laughs> It's like, Dimitri, Dimitri, you are a farmer. Yes. This is what you do. Yes, I That farm. is your identity. Yes, yes, yes. you farm. If you I farm. make uh, 13,000 potatoes, I do good work. We need 15,000 potatoes, Dimitri. Okay, but three of my children died in the field this year. Good, then you have less mouths to feed. It's a good point, yes, more, <laughs> more potatoes. Use them uh, as fertilizer. <laughs> That's from a little-known checkoff play. Uh, potatoes. Called, called the Potato Farmer. <laughs> It's that's a, that's the one where Chekhov said, look, if a potato appears in Act 1, <laughs> somebody has to make French fries by oh Act 3. God, that's, a, that's a pretty deep. I don't know if anyone's going to get that yeah, joke. Yeah, no, no, no. But if someone gets that joke, uh, write us in because we love you for listening. Uh, <laughs> um, hey, we make ourselves laugh. That's the else. important part. The the that's day. the important part. Uh, <laughs> potato in Act 1. <laughs> Uh, but no, you're right. You're right, right? It's only as much as you're worth. And, yeah. you know, it, you will sacrifice. And it's very easy to sacrifice sleep. Yeah. I think it's extremely easy to sacrifice sleep. Right, because you can function. Right. Like, I mean, you're not functioning well. Mm -hmm. um, but you can fun You can get up with five hours of sleep. You can slam back a cup of coffee. Right. Maybe take an aspirin. Maybe do this, that, and the other. I'll take a cold shower. Whatever it is. You can be awake. You're awake because your body's flooded with adrenaline, yeah. which isn't good for you <laughs> nope. in the long term. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> by any means. But you're awake, right. and you can go do things. And, and, and you think about the people who need the most sleep often get the least. 
parents, new parents, yeah. desperately need sleep because yeah. they're taking care of a newborn child. They get no sleep. Doctors yeah. are encouraged to Not work to sleep. 27 hour shifts. Which boggles my mind because, okay, so um, uh, when there's daylight savings time, mm-hmm. that, that day that we lose an hour, yeah. the, the following Monday is the highest incidence of car accidents a year. Really? Consistently, year huh. after year, because people are underslept and so their motor skills are affected. Now, do you want someone performing surgery on you <laughs> whose motor skills are affected? Uh, hey, hey, Brad, we're going to get to that triple bypass in a second. I'm just going to get a macchiato and then we'll be on this. Yeah. Like, but yeah, I mean, the, the, these are the people that should be getting the most sleep. Yeah. Soldiers? Warriors? Like, yeah. talk about people that you want on the top of their mental and yeah. physical game. And, and don't get me wrong. I've never fought in a war. I've never been in the military. And I can't even imagine what those men and women go through. Um, and oftentimes I'm sure they don't have the option to get a full night's sleep, but that's just, that's terrible. That sucks for them. Yeah. And it's not fair to them. And it doesn't mean we can change it. You know, Yeah. It's hard to have, you know, when you think of, think of high, high skilled jobs, high stress jobs, when you're underslept, you're not going to have focus. Right. That's one of the first things that goes, um, your body for men, especially has a hard time producing testosterone Mm -hmm. when you're underslept, produces cortisol instead. Um, that uh, um, can lead to like cravings and it's hard to, it's easy to gain weight and hard to lose it. Um, the number one thing, you know, I've talked before, I got up to like 320 pounds during the pandemic, started trying to lose weight, cleaned up my diet, started going to the gym, saw a little bit of improvement. When I started making myself sleep eight hours a night, the fat blow torched off me. Really? Yeah. Because I was just chronically underslept. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. If you are chronically underslept, you may not even realize you're underslept and tired. Right, because you're used to feeling you're like that. You're used to feeling that way. It's, it's the same idea where you have these people who have had these like long-term injuries, right? Like their yeah. rotator cuff has been torn, right? And they're like, you didn't know you had this? No, I just got accustomed to the pain. That's yeah. just what my life was. And it's like, well, I get that you may not know you're underslept, but you know that you're supposed to get eight hours of sleep a night, right? Like, and if you're not getting eight hours of sleep a night, whether it be because you are pushing yourself past your limits or because you're having difficulty sleeping, all of these are signs that you need to take care of yourself more. Yeah. And I do, we, don't, we don't pretend to know what is causing you the distress that is causing you not to be able to sleep, but look at it as a sign and take care of it. That's part of self-care. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a reason that there's multiple countries in the world that have nap time during the day. Yeah. Right? It's like, nope. Basically, everyone but us <laughs> yes. has nap, nap time, time during the day. Like, look, look, everybody, three o'clock, everyone lay down for an hour. You yeah. know what I mean? Just take it take it off. Although in uh, Italy, I was talking to someone about that. I was like, oh, you guys have the siesta, right? And, you know, just like, like you know, Mexico and Spain. And mm-hmm. they were like... They were like, see, see, yes, we have, we have the siesta. And I was like, so everybody goes home and naps. And he goes, no, 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 no. In Italy, every afternoon, we go home and make love. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I love Italy. Right. <laughs> and so after that five minutes, he sleeps for another 55 yeah, yeah, minutes. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like you got to take care of yourself. And it, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I just think it's so stupid that we idolize people who don't sleep. Yeah. And, and again, the, the effects on your mental health, the effects on your physical health, nothing is going to function at 100%. If you're already struggling with this stuff, you know, you're, you're struggling with depression, you're struggling with bipolar, borderline personality disorder, whatever it is, if you're not getting enough sleep, you're not going to be able to fight it. Yeah. Yeah. Because your, your chemicals are going to be all out of whack, your focus is going to be all out of yeah. whack, and you're just not going to be able to combat it. And then think about it like this. You are taking chemical like if you are on medication you are taking medicals to help affect your uh uh uh, your mental health right Mm -hmm. but the mental health uh is also being affected by the lack of sleep yeah so so you're throwing medication at a problem while making that problem worse yeah (laughs) yeah um and so you know you you're you go to your doctor because this is something too like like you said your your doctor asked you about sleep mine never did Mm. Um, at least not that I recall. Um, Were you asleep? I might have been. I might have been. <laughs> or I was so whacked out on cocaine. 
Um, <laughs> I also don't recommend if you're trying to get your sleep in order. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. This is been, yeah. This is been Just a- if any of you were wondering <laughs> if that was a good sleep aid. It's a public service announcement by Brad about the uh, negative use of uh, cocaine for sleep. Don't do drugs. <laughs> Um, more you know. <laughs> but um, uh, anyway, uh, you know, you may go to your doctor and be like, hey, you know, my meds aren't working and they up your meds. But what you actually just needed is an hour more of sleep a night. Maybe. You know, maybe get everything. I mean, we always say, you know, talk to your doctor about all this stuff. But I think you should get everything you can in order. Yeah. Like, look, how's your sleep? How's your diet? How's your, you know, right. well, getting we, some exercise? Because we've talked about this in previous episodes that like. Just eating more quinoa is not going to fix your problem. Yeah. You know, just, you know, just getting more sleep is not going to fix your problem, but it will and, help. And eating more avocado is right. just going to go to the cartels. And the cartels. <laughs> We're so sorry. Uh, but, no, it's, but that idea of like, you can still help. It still helps if yeah. you're getting into shape. It still yeah. helps if you're watching what yeah, you're Yeah, you're not going to be able to fix this without medication and therapy. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't even say fix because you're going to have it the rest of your life. Treat. And you have to accept that. You're not going to be able to treat it without medication and therapy. But those other things can help. Right. Or they can hinder if they're out of whack. Sure. You know, if you're eating garbage and you're not sleeping and you don't get any sunlight and you don't have any form of exercise, even just walking in a day – uh, I would bet you that the people who fall into that category, their medication doses are much higher right. than the rest of us because the medication is having to now overcome. Right. It has these, to fight yeah. so much harder than it should. Thanks for listening. Help us continue the conversation. Leave us a comment with your thoughts, experiences, or questions about mental health. Every opinion and viewpoint is valid. Just don't be a dick. Hey, friends. Brad and I started Batshit because we needed someone to talk to about our bipolar. So when looking for a sponsor, BetterHelp was the obvious choice. BetterHelp provides access to therapists via text, via Zoom, via email, via phone call, 24 hours, seven days a week. I don't need to tell anyone how broken the American healthcare system is, especially when it comes to mental illness. But the beautiful thing about BetterHelp is that they'll work with you. Go to www.betterhelp.com backslash batshit. You'll get 10% off for the first month and you'll get someone to talk to right now. If you need to talk to someone, do it. Please. We love you. The other reason I wanted to talk about sleep is something I said earlier. I don't dream in that I do not remember my dreams. I I can count on one hand the number of dreams I can remember in the last six months. And my wife will wake up and she'll be like, I had this dream where, you know, I was riding a unicorn and stars were talking to me. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Uh, blackness. <laughs> Darkness. That's all I remember. And there's all this, you know, faux science about like, well, if your dream was this, it means this, right? Like if you, if you experience, if you dream that you're falling, it means X, Y, and Z. And... Have you had trouble, or do you dream when you sleep? Do you sometimes dream? Do you I dream sleep? a lot, and I dream very vividly. Really? Yeah. Like, to the point where sometimes I have a hard time getting up in the morning because I want to be in that dream more. Really? And then yeah. are, you, are you, like, aware in your dreams? Sometimes. Sometimes. It's like a mixed yeah. bag. Yeah. Um, not always, but mm-hmm. sometimes. Especially the dreams that occur, like... Like, if you ever, well, you don't dream, but... Um, <laughs> Rub it in. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, if you dream... Dreams are great, Adam. <laughs> They're so good. Uh, <laughs> um, sometimes I'll, I'll be dreaming and I start to wake up, but I'm not fully awake. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm in a dream and I can kind of go back to sleep and go back into the dream. But oh. now I know I'm in a dream. Um and what's frustrating is every time that happens, like, it'll be something amazing going on in the dream. I start to wake up. I'm like, I want to go back into that dream. And I go back and I can't get that thing to happen again. <laughs> like, whatever it was that I wanted to go back to. It's like, well, shit, now I'm just in my childhood home. <laughs> this is worthless. <laughs> <laughs> this is no real tough. Stupid. <laughs> um, but, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's always something. Is it, And it's interesting. And I notice this more now now that I know I'm mentally ill Mm -hmm. is a lot of times too, I'll have a dream and I wake up depressed from it. Really? Yeah. Like it'll be a dream. Like, you know, 
someone I pushed away while I was in a manic state. And, you know, it'll be be a dream where we're just hanging out and having a good time and like we're friends again. Mm -hmm. And then I wake up and I'm like, God damn it. Now, (laughs) now is that also like nonsensical dreams, you know, like, Oh man, the sun exploded in my dream. So you wake up sad about it. My dreams. I don't really have stuff like that. My dreams are always, you know, I guess this makes sense being a writer, but they're kind of stories. Oh, okay. Like it's almost like little movies playing out. Mm-hmm. Now there might be some nonsensical stuff in those movies, like like oh, this is the house I grew up in, but for some reason it's the size of a shopping mall. Sure, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, or um, uh, I don't know, like you know, it's raining, but it's raining broken glass, so we all have to stay inside. Yeah, yeah you yeah, know, yeah, something yeah. weird like yeah. that. It's a good know? other example. That was nice. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, so we'll, I'll I'll have dreams like that, but for the most part, like there's some kind of story, and I'm interacting with other people. Okay. In those dreams, um, which uh, you know can be really interesting, good and bad. But like you were talking about the faux science of like dreams mean this. I go back and forth on whether dreams are just your brain dumping shit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like all right, here's a bunch of information we don't really need. Let's process it. You know, get rid of it. Or if your dreams do mean something, but I think if they mean something, it's impossible for any of that faux dream science to tell you what it means. Because that all that stuff relies on like Jungian symbolism. Like yeah. if you dream of spiders, it means this. And mm-hmm. it's like, well, what if what if you had a bad experience with spiders as a kid and I love spiders and I'm fascinated with them? Wouldn't spiders mean something different to both of us? Right, right, right. Yeah. You know? So I think dreams could mean something, but I think that meaning is going to be highly personalized and individualized. Sure. You know? Sure. So, you know, it's a, it's a window. Some people can say it's like a window into your subconscious, right? It's yeah. like, you know, so maybe even repressed memories or emotions or ideas, you know, may come out in your dreams. I don't know. But see, the thing that I struggle with is because I don't dream or I don't, again, I don't remember my dreams. Everyone says to me that like, look, you dream. You just don't remember your dreams. I'm yeah. like, okay, I don't remember my dreams. Is it a is it a repression thing? It, can my brain not handle what is you know what I mean? My subconscious is my subconscious yeah. like no, we need all of this information. Keep storing it. We can't dump <laughs> any of this. You need to remember you know every Pokemon name. Like that's what you have to do. I, I don't know all the Pokemon, but it's um. I have kids. Yeah, I know, the I know you do. But, uh, <laughs> but like that idea, you know, it's it, it honestly worries me. It worry it concerns yeah. me, um, because there's also a certain amount of creativity that exists. You know what I mean yeah. in dreams. Like you, my my wife is extremely creative, and her dreams are wild as fuck. Yeah. And there's like this is this like I'm jealous. There's jealousy there. Yeah. And I'm like it. So part of me because I've done some research on this. It's like. People who have trouble sleeping, like you're saying, that is a sign of depression, right? Yeah. Is not dreaming a component of that? Is maybe the sleep that you're not is the sleep you're getting not real sleep? So therefore, you know, it counts as not sleeping well. Like th- these are the things that sometimes no, well, they don't keep me up at night. Because that's the other <laughs> weird thing. I fall asleep instantly. Yeah. Like I can read for maybe five minutes unless I'm in a different you know headspace, but. Um, if I'm having an episode, but otherwise I'm asleep in five minutes and then I'm awake. Yeah, and that's it. Wow. Yeah, it's I don't and I don't get it. You know. Okay, so I'll say this with my dreams: the dreams I remember are the ones I'm having when I wake up. Hmm. So maybe like if you're just popping awake like that, like does an alarm wake you up? No. Nope. Like what? It, yeah, maybe maybe you are maybe you've finished your REM cycles and you're waking up. And that's why you don't remember them. Well, like I'm in the easy bake oven, like, bing, yeah, you're up. Yeah, like, <laughs> because <laughs> like I'm waking up in the middle of a dream usually. Oh, like, really? Like I am currently dreaming when I wake up. Oh. And so I remember my dream. Huh. So the, But again, it's like, so the credits have rolled and yeah. then I wake up. Yeah, like the, the movie theater goes dark. <laughs> like the ushers yeah. finish sweeping the popcorn. Yeah. And then Adam wakes up. Yeah. Huh. But see, but here's the Whereas, other Whereas, like, somebody's coming into my movie theater and grabbing me by the arm and being like, get out of here! <laughs> you don't have a ticket! But see, here's <laughs> the thing. I will occasionally be woken up by, like, my dogs, you yeah. know, because they're dogs, and uh, we don't have a king-size bed. We have a queen-size bed, and they both want to sleep on it. So there are times where I will be asleep, and then I will wake up because my dog, Beans, decided to jump up on my chest. But I don't remember 
like it's not like I'm in the middle of a dream and then Bean snaps me out of it. You know Interesting. I mean? yeah. yeah. It's and it's one of the reasons I kind of want to do a sleep study again. Yeah. Because I want them to attach electrodes to my brain, you know, and uh see what's going on up there while I sleep if I sleep, you know? Yeah. It's, it's fascinating to me. Um I would be curious anyone listening out there um do you do you not dream? Any of you who don't dream or don't mm. remember their dreams, uh, do you have depression or bipolar? Yeah, you sure. know, I'd be curious about that. Yeah, I, I'm also curious to see if, like, like, do you have extremely vivid dreams, like Brad mm-hmm. does, like almost like you're cognitively aware that you're dreaming most yeah. of the time. Like, is that yeah. something you experience? And I have, I even have like tactile sensation in my dreams. Like, really? I can feel things. See, that's yeah. Wow. Like, that's I can feel like hugging someone. Really? In my dream. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, please, uh, people who are listening, uh, write us, uh, leave a voice message. I'm super curious, yeah. you know, because I'm, us having a conversation about this is not going to fix my lack of dreaming, um, or Brad's extremely vivid dreaming, but uh, I do think it's interesting to talk about. Yeah, it's fascinating, especially combining it with mental illness. Right. Because, um, uh, are you familiar with night terrors? Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So. My sister had them growing up. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So uh, for those of you who, who might not be, um, a night terror is where you wake up, but you're still dreaming. So uh, it causes hallucinations and delusions. You'll wake up and you think someone's in your room about to attack you. Yep. Um, kind of a, a cousin to sleep paralysis, except you can get up and move. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if you think about it, is that what's occurring Again, when you have uh, like bipolar one or schizophrenia and you're having psychotic delusions or hallucinating there, is it kind of the same part of your brain firing? Maybe. Are you dreaming while awake? Maybe. I mean, think about it. Like, is my lack of dreaming just an amplified version of my depression? Because my depression does not allow me to deal with anything, right? So my, my body's defense mechanism is black it out. Yeah. Black it out. Like, you can't deal with these subconscious, you know, these images or these tactile sensations or this, you know, <clears throat> tangential jump that we're making because uh, of your depression. So, black it out. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, again, going to surprise you guys. We're not doctors. <laughs> not doctors. Haven't studied. Uh, I, I know that's that's going to floor some It's going to floor you. some people. Let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> we don't know what we're talking about, but we are talking. Because um, honestly, the only conversations I've had about sleep with people is when a friend wants to tell me about their dream, which I never want to hear about. Because nine times out of ten, they're like... Great, man. I know it was really weird that you're walking through those marshmallows and flip flops, but I can't. <laughs> I, okay, cool. Yeah. Or it's just like, or or they're like, man, I'm tired. I didn't get enough sleep. Like that's it. That's yeah. the, that's the whole scope of what people talk about sleep wise. <laughs> and I'm like, well, there's so much more that's involved than that. Like, yeah. and the effects it has on you and the people around you and your mental health and your physical health. And yeah, there's so much with sleep hygiene. Um, you mean like I, brushing your teeth while you sleep? Yeah. No. Oh. Um, no, just the, uh, uh, the things that lead to good sleep. Oh, right. That we neglect. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was reading something about how, how many Americans have sleep apnea and don't realize it. Sure. Uh, you know, if you're snoring and you wake yourself up by your snoring, it's probably sleep apnea. Right. And so you're never getting a full rested night's sleep. And you don't even realize it. And they say people who suffer from that on average have, uh, a, 10 years shorter lifespan. 10 years? Because of the stress it puts on your heart. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so, you know, a lot of interesting stuff there. On the topic of dreams, and I wanted to share this as we as we share all the weird stuff that we go through. Mm. I had for three nights in a row a dream where I wrote a suicide note. Really? Yeah. It is it is it all the same note? It's the same note. Really? Yeah. Same, same, wow. Yeah. I, I was setting up my computer, typing it, and it it happened three nights in a row, and it was so vividly in my mind that I actually sat down and typed it the next day. You could remember it word for word. I could remember it, and it's setting in the drafts in my, my email. 
Ooh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> emails. Yeah. Um, and uh, I stopped having the dream after writing it down. Really? Uh huh. Did it make sense? Did the note make sense? Was yeah. it eloquent? Was it? Um, nah, el- eloquent's not the right word. But trying to think of if I should read it or not. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no please read it. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should. Oh, uh, there's but, a good idea. Uh, it, you know, it. What was interesting about it is it's not eloquent. It's not. You know, I I, I tend to write eloquently and dramatically and, right, you know, right, blah 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 yeah. and it was just it's very like matter of fact this is that that is this yeah it's you know um and it's it bothered me a lot so uh i brought it up to my therapist and um she was like you know well well what all is going on you know in your life and you know i was kind of talking about talking about just the change and like figuring out how to deal with things without the mania Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just, I kind of feel like I'm in this for lack of a better term, like a chrysalis, you know, that I'm, I'm becoming someone new through this process. And I don't know who that person is. And she's like, well, maybe that's what the, what the dream was. Maybe you're, you're killing off your old self. See, that's that interpretation um, shit, yeah. man. And then, like, and don't get me wrong. Maybe your doctor's right. Yeah. Maybe your doctor's right. But it, but what worries me is if my doctor's like, I, I would prefer to believe that mm-hmm. because the other thing I think is, like, God, is, like, is there part of my brain that's thinking about suicide? You know? Maybe, yeah. Um, and that, that kind of scares me. Sure. Understandably so. Yeah. Because it, it, you can't turn that off. Yeah, right? you can't like. It's not like you can go into your dream and have a conversation with Dream Brad, who's writing that note. Right. You know, you you just have to accept that there's a part of you that doesn't, you know, that wants to write that note, that wants that action, and that's that's terrifying, man. Yeah. It's yeah, it's weird too because I feel like I've really had like a breakthrough lately, mm-hmm. where I've let a lot of stuff go. Um, you know, I've talked before about having this guilt my entire life about my mother and I had just had like a big breakthrough about that. Like I don't feel that anymore. So you don't feel th- that guilt about that anymore? Yeah. That's great. And I'm hoping that sticks around. I mean, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, this is going to be temporary. I'll go into a depression soon. It'll eh, hit me again. But, maybe. But I, I really feel, I feel like a weight's been lifted there. That's amazing. Um, and, you know, I mean, I've, I've carried that around for 40 years, you know. Um, so, so taking that weight off, it's, it's kind of strange. So I'm hoping my therapist is right, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's a positive yeah. thing. You know, it's the, the, the Phoenix burning before it rises from the ash. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's interesting that you had it three nights in a row. Yeah. Three, do, do you often have re- repetitive dreams? No. Weird. Yeah. Weird. Like once in a blue moon. Huh. Huh. Yeah. That's a trip, man. But I mean, yeah, like you said, maybe your doctor's right. Maybe that's what it is. I yeah. Mean, the the other the other thing I will say about who I am is I have never I have never contemplated suicide, but I have definitely had the thought of why am I bothering to go on? Why am I yeah. bothering to do this? Like none of this makes any sense. None of it's worth it. And you know it. it I wonder if there is an element of that that it can be translated into like a dream state, you know? Is is there is there a component of your apathy or your defeatedness, your defeatedness, defeat, defeatism, defeat, defeatism, defeat, defeat, defeatism, 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 yeah, <laughs> that could translate into a dream, and and how would that manifest and is is that represented? And I don't know. I, I think there's there's so much value in sleep, and so little I think we actually know about it. Yeah. You know, a, yeah. a dream. I mean, think about it. dreams. Think about how crazy the idea of dreams is. Oh yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. You don't live this life, but now you do. In this, <laughs> while well, you're not, you know, cognitively aware. Yeah. There was a um a TV show, oh years ago now. Um, but the whole idea was um, this guy's a cop, right? He's a cop, and he uh, gets in a car accident with his wife and his son, okay? and Awake. 
Is that what it was? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, so, and his wife dies, right? So he and his son are, like, trying to struggle through, and he's a detective, and he's trying to solve crimes. He goes to sleep at night. He wakes up, and his son was the one who died in the car accident. I'm sorry. When he falls asleep, it's like he's waking up. And when that happens, his wife is uh, his wife is the one who lives, and his son is the one who died. And he's seeing two different therapists, one when he's awake and one when he's asleep, and he doesn't know which one is real. Yeah. And the crimes are often the same and manifest in similar ways in the uh, – so, of course, he's like, dream me, help awake me, solve the problem. And um, – I just wanted to share that show with you guys because it was a really fun show. And if uh, you guys are looking for a pre-existing IP out there, you can bring that back. <laughs> uh, but that's just a, it's a really interesting concept because the guy's guilt, right, is the idea is that the guy's guilt for him having survived but his wife dying or his son dying helped, you know, cause the manifestation of this other life, right, yeah. in, in his dreams. So, like, is the depression I feel, the mania I feel, the guilt I feel, the shame I feel producing these – uh, experiences when I'm supposed to be asleep that is keeping me from sleeping and causing me to just perpetuate the issue with my depression and my mental illness. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, again, we're just two guys talking in a garage. Yeah. Uh, it's, we're not doctors, so we don't really know. Well, it's like I was saying. Like, I, I'll, I'll have a dream sometimes where I wake up depressed because, like, I'm, I'm dreaming about somebody I can't that like means something to me that I can't see anymore. Right. Right. You know, or, you know, a friend that passed away or something and you wake up and you just feel like shit. Yeah. Um, And it's, is it your brain trying to work through guilt? Is it your brain trying to work through longing? You know, is it, is it trying to process things or is it just even fucking with you? (laughs) You know, brain's a fucking jerk, man. (laughs) Hate my fucking brain. (laughs) Hate my fucking brain. Fucking needling me all the time. (laughs) Trying to get me to remember stuff. But I mean, seriously, like, you know, because you get into depressed states, for instance, and you you kind of start thinking in ways that perpetuate the depressed state. Yep. So it makes sense that your subconscious would do that, too. Yeah, totally. It's like, I know this is going to bother you right now. So while you're asleep, I'm going to hit you Here with this. There you go. Yeah. Here's a little of this. Yeah. Because fuck you. <laughs> uh. do, do you find, well, so have you always not dreamed? Has that been affected by your medication at all? So that, that's that's an interesting question, right? Because I don't remember dreaming much as yeah. a kid. I don't remember. I do remember specific dreams I have had, yeah. right? Like ones that have stuck with me, which means I've I've obviously dreamt at some point multiple times. And um, but getting on the medication didn't cause the dreaming to increase. Um, having uh, more vivid dreams didn't happen. Like, yeah, no, that was a thing. Huh. And but the other, the other fucked up thing about depression is your memory is affected by depression. Uh, yeah. It's harder for you to uh, create lasting memories when you are depressed. So maybe I did dream more. I just don't remember because I was depressed. Yeah, that's true. It's, we've, and we've talked about memory gaps with mania. Yeah, and misremembering stuff too. Basically, if if you have any of this stuff. Your memory sucks. It sucks. (laughs) It sucks. It sucks so bad. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Hey, hey, um, get some sleep. Uh, Remember that sleep is a huge uh, component to your mental and your physical health. Um, And if you guys have, like, you know, I want to know, do you dream? Do you not dream? How vivid are your dreams? Is there a regularity? Are they repetitive? Like, I, I know I made fun of my friends for telling me their dreams a minute ago. Um, so please don't tell me about your dreams. Just <laughs> give us these descriptives, uh, descriptors, because uh, that's far more interesting to me. Yeah. I, I wonder if there's a pattern. Yeah. And do you have anything in common with, you know, some of the other stuff we were saying? Like, do you ever wake up from a dream and the dream depressed you? Yeah. yeah or the yeah, dream, yeah. or on the you know flip side, do you wake up from a dream and the dream made you so happy that you start your day wonderfully? In which case, fuck you. Yeah, you go to hell. You stop <laughs> listening to this podcast. This podcast is not for you. <laughs> but we still want to hear about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. But, but after you write in, just unfollow. Yeah, go to hell. Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs>